All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna be seeing an upcoming surge in the tropics coming up. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I wanna know, by time we're at June 10th, how many tropical storms do you think we will have seen from this point till then? One, two, or zero, or three even. I don't think there will be three, but let me know if you do. Anyway, uh, let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook for the Atlantic Ocean, and take a look at that. We have a 50% chance of tropical activity there, very well offshore of Florida, and even it's east of Bermuda as well, very, very far into the ocean. I think the good news with this one is no matter how much it develops, it is going to stay offshore. Here's for the five-day outlook, because that was the two-day, so here's the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and you can see it's still a 50% chance, so... If we see this one become a tropical storm very shortly, uh, that would be a record for the quickest time to reach three tropical storms uh, in an Atlantic hurricane season. So that would be a big feat there. Uh, and we might even see a fourth by time uh, we're about <laughs> June 10th. Uh, so it would be very interesting to see if that happens. We're getting very active very quickly. It's very unusual, the pattern we're in right now. Now we're about to move on and we're going to take a look at some model guidance for this first tropical system and then we're very quickly going to move on to our uh, potential gulf storm that I think will be a much more major storm and potentially bring much more major impacts. All right, and here we are talking about this first one, and we can see that this is our spaghetti model guidance, and you can see a lot of them heading have it heading towards uh, Canada, actually, Newfoundland, Labrador, uh, all of those areas of the coastal eastern regions of Canada could potentially be impacted there, and then some of those models have it curving back, hitting Greenland, potentially even hitting Iceland, and then kind of curving back down. Uh, so this one's going to be all over the place, but for the most part, it doesn't pose a threat to the United States as of right now, unless something significantly changes, this one is definitely going to stay away from us. Uh, if anything, maybe Maine would feel the most impacts, but if that's even any impacts. Let's take a look at that satellite imagery for this one, and it does have some swirl to it, but really it doesn't have a lot of those tall, very white clouds, so I don't know how much potential this one has to develop. It's going to need to really get its act together very shortly here. Here is our intensity guidance, and it kind of works the same way, except it's a graph here, and each line is a model. So you can see only two of them have it reaching tropical storm status at this point, so it's kind of looking like it mostly, or most likely, will not become a tropical storm, but there still is that chance that it just continues to intensify. And again, if it does, we will reach, uh, it'll be the fastest we've ever reached three tropical storms in an Atlantic hurricane season ever, uh, so that would be a record-breaking season already. Uh, but we need a lot to change for, th for that to happen. A lot of these models actually have it weakening from this point on, and, and in 24 hours they have it much weaker than it is now. So it's going to need to overcome a lot in order to help us break that record uh, for an Atlantic hurricane season. All right, now we're about to move on, and we're going to talk about that that Gulf system, which is probably why most of you clicked on this video, the one that's near Mexico, uh, and potentially going to pose a threat for the Gulf Coast of the United States. All right, so here we are. We're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook for this one, and you can see within the next 24 hours, or sorry, 48 hours, we have 50% chance of development of this one, and it's in the Pacific side as of right now. So a lot of you know this if you watched yesterday's video. It is in the Pacific, but it looks to either reform in the Atlantic or completely move over Central America or Mexico and just move into the Atlantic and then develop from that point on. Uh, here's your five-day outlook, and you can see 70% chance within the next five days. So this one is looking very likely to develop, at least uh, within the next five days. The likelihood is very great that we will see this one develop in the Pacific, and then eventually either form as a different separate system in the Atlantic or completely just transfer over, uh, in which case I think we've reached a conclusion that in that case it does keep its Pacific name if it was to become a tropical storm actually, which is also very interesting because we would get another A system. I forget what the name is that it would be, but we will most likely see it actually in the coming days as it develops and have to talk about that a little bit. 
All right, so we're about to move on and we're gonna take a look at some model guidance. Like yesterday's video, we're gonna go over the European model, the GFS model, and the Canadian model all separately and just take a look. And then we're also gonna take a look at the European ensemble model and the GFS ensemble model. So we're gonna go over pretty much every single major model and just take a look at what they're showing at this point, uh, which I think is gonna be the most thorough way to go about this. Just see what are the odds of this one developing in the Gulf. All right, so here we are, first things first, taking a look at our European model here. And this is our kind of pressure compared to normal. And you can see the blues are below normal pressure. The reds and yellows are above average pressure. So you can see that by the time we're at June 5th, the European model does have some a little bit of below average pressure developing there in the Gulf of Mexico to the north and west of the Yucatan Peninsula. And by the time we're at June 7th, it has that area of low pressure hitting Louisiana and Texas right there. I guess mostly on the Louisiana side, but that would have some impacts for Texas as well. Very interesting. It has it just heading straight north into Louisiana. So here's some of the impacts. Here's the sustained winds in miles per hour. And you can see that the greens is 20 to 30 mile per hour winds sustained. And then the yellows is 30 to maybe 38 miles per hour sustained winds. Uh, so this is maybe a strong tropical storm. Uh, definitely not a hurricane by this point, but I would say a strong tropical storm. Uh, and, and this is probably the weaker of the models, actually, as far as how strong it has it getting. Here's that total rainfall if this was to occur, and this would be the most major impacts at this point for wherever it hits. Uh, it, if it were to hit Louisiana like this one shows, it shows in the reds, uh, we would have about maybe two to six inches of rain. And in the browns, we would have maybe six to ten inches of rain. And in those blues, we would have ten inches plus of rain. So this would be a flooding rain event if the European model was correct. Let's move on to that GFS model and you can see it has it developing into a 983 millibar low pressure system in the Pacific Ocean and then eventually has it transferring over or kind of moving over and it really weakens, has it at a 1002 millibar low pressure system and this is by June 7th. So this one has it having or happening much later uh, and it kind of just lingers there here on our 6Z GFS model run. This one's been all over the place so I suspect that by 12Z it'll already be way different. Uh, and again, the location doesn't really matter. It's mostly that it has it heading into the Gulf in general, but it has it re-intensifying to a 973 millibar low pressure system and actually kind of has it re-hitting uh, the east coast of Mexico there. Here's your Canadian model. It kind of just has it developing south and east of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is kind of the outlier out of all of these models as a 1003 millibar low pressure system. And then it moves through the Yucatan Peninsula and develops as a 1000 millibar low pressure system there. And this is by June 5th. And then by June 8th, it still has it as a 1,001 millibar low pressure system. So very, very weak still, but it has it heading towards coastal Texas there. All right, so we're about to move on. We're going to take a look at what our ensemble models have to say about this, our European ensemble model and our GFS ensemble model. And then we're going to get into our comment of the day. All right, so here's a European ensemble model. You can see it has above average pressure in the yellows and reds once again uh, for the Gulf of Mexico by about June 2nd. And an ensemble model, by the way, just in case you're wondering, is just a ton of models. I think the European ensemble model is like 30 members or something. So it's 30 different members, and then it combines the mean average. Uh, and then by the time we see June 4th, you can see that we get below average pressure there for the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to see that most of these models do have a low pressure system moving into the Gulf of Mexico, most likely just to the west or north of the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, now here's our GFS ensemble model, and you see same thing. By June 1st, it has above average pressure for the entire Gulf of Mexico. And then by the time we reach June 7th, look at that. The GFS model is much more consistent here with the ensemble model. Again, multiple members, about 30, 20 or 30 here on the GFS ensemble model. And you can see this one is actually much more confident in it. It has much lower pressure here, a 998 millibar low pressure system on average. And it's located right there in the middle of the Gulf. If it heads right there, it is most likely, almost certainly going to make impact with one of our Gulf states there. Uh, this one looks to be heading for Florida on average, but all that we need to take away from this is pretty much all of the major models at this point, even the two ensemble models, with the exception of only the GFS, have this system moving into the Gulf and then eventually towards the United States 
Uh, the GFS is the only one that really has it curved back towards Mexico, and it's an outlier. When the GFS is an outlier, you do not want to side with that one. You mostly want to side, especially when it doesn't have its own ensemble support, because you can see the GFS ensemble model completely disagrees with what the normal GFS had to say. So uh, we're going to need to take that one with a grain of salt. But again, the track doesn't really matter. What's key here is that all of the widely accepted major models, including the two major ensemble models, all having this tropical activity move into the Gulf, that's really increasing my confidence that we will have something to track there in the Gulf for the beginning, the first week of June, probably, if not a couple days afterwards. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is going to happen with this Gulf storm? And Bascombe family said, I think it will become a stronger tropical storm because all of the key ingredients are in place for this system to become stronger once it tracks towards the coast. And I completely agree. The Gulf is in a very favorable state right now. And all of our major models, once again, like I said, have this one moving into the Gulf. So the sky is the limit for this one, even though it's so early in the season. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.